you very much for coming to Queen's Park Arts Centre this afternoon. It's lovely to welcome everyone. Um, I'm delighted that Chris and Freya are going to be talking and presenting this afternoon at Queen's Park. It's a real privilege and uh, I hope you enjoy the exhibition after their talk and demo. Thank you very much. Afternoon. Afternoon. Yeah. Got a lovely day for it. Yes. <laughs> and you're in here. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, what I'm going to, I was, I was hoping to do some of my contemporary work, but I, I can't do it because um, I'm carving porcelain and it's like, if you're watching it, it's like watching paint dry. <laughs> and um, I use it when it's quite, um, rather than carving when it's soft. I, I carve it when it's really um, bone dry and then I use sanding and I use um, wet sponges to bring it down and I use nail varnish to give different types of um, depths to it. So, so, that's, so I thought I'd, I'll go um, and have a go at one of my figurative pieces since I have to make it for someone and uh, <laughs> that, that, that it all fits in so uh, I hope you... Don't mind me doing it that way, rather than contemporary work. Um, right, so I'll just, it'd be good if you, I don't mind questions at all. That helps me um, talk about everything rather than, because I get into it and um, I forget about it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, it's, and it's not good, is it? Uh. Asking how long since you were last here because you came here before, didn't you? I have been before, yeah. and, I, and I can't remember. <laughs> no, that, I remember you, of course. <laughs> <laughs> the mask, it's the mask. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, I think everybody had a, uh, had a reset in the time that we had off and rethought about life and what you wanted to do, and, and etc. etc. And um, I, I Change direction. Well, not change direction. I, I wanted to do a bit more carving, and um, which was related to the time that was uh, carving stone. When I was in Zimbabwe for a couple of years, I learned to carve stone, and uh, that's why I carve the porcelain when it's bone dry rather than um, when it's soft. And um, and another thing, I, I'm known for making quite big pots, and moving them around all the time is. Is, um, it can get a bit stressful, uh, and I'm getting a bit older. And, uh, you don't look any different. No, thank you, thank you. So, uh, yeah. so, yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah, well. We, yeah. Oh, this is my daughter Freya. Yeah. She, 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 she's. Well, uh, I'll put that there, and we'll talk about it in a minute. Yeah. Um, she's um, slowly taking over my studio, and uh, and she's doing very well now. If you uh, see her on Instagram, she's all over the world these days, and uh, and um, getting lots of uh, press. She's uh, doing quite exciting things. Which is nice to to see. Oh, it's one of those. Okay. Right. So um, along my short career. Uh, I uh, started off with modelling first of all um, in, um, in Hastings and I worked with a gentleman called uh, Tony Bennett. He doesn't sing. <laughs> and uh, you may have noticed his work. Um, he, he did uh, the, ne the Neanderthal men in um, the British Museum. And um, once I knew he did those and visited that, I really captivated his uh, modelling. And um, he would do every line on every lip and every crease 
and uh, he, he's just fantastic. And he was um, he went to college with people like Flock and Law, who does um, spitting images, and uh, Harry Franchetti, Jackie Poncelet. It was a, a well famous um, group of people that finished the Royal in the 70s. I mean, all of them have done really well in what they've done. It's, uh, they're quite an amazing crew. So I started off with him in Hastings, and then um, I was doing quite a lot of modelling and uh, sculpture works. And um, while I was in an exhibition design course, and uh, then I dropped the course towards the end, build up a portfolio of um, uh, figurative stuff, and then moved on to, uh, I got invited actually to go to Glasgow School of Art, went to Glasgow School of Art, and then I learned to throw. And um, <clears throat> then I started um, to combine the two pieces, the throwing and the, and the figurative work. So this is one, this is one um, that's um, um, metamorphosed, moved on to, um, I call this the Fisher Woman, anyway. So, which actually comes, originally comes from a flower called an amaryllis. So an amaryllis is a, a bulb, which um, somebody once told me that um, you didn't have to put water with it or anything like that. You just put it in the pot and it just lives off its bulb and it just grows and it just blossoms for once. And um, this is what I've done for this young girl. So, um, the face from the young girl comes from a girl called Tracy, who came to uh, my workshop and she wanted me to make some dolls for her. And um, she wanted to start a doll line. And in exchange, I modeled it. I asked if I could model her face. And, uh, and that was our exchange. And ever since that, it's just been different versions of this. And it's been quite successful in my... So this is the kind of a base I paired earlier. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll just kind of clean up clean up the bottom. All the work I do now is um, stoneware. For the first, um, say I've been doing it for about 40 years, um, the first um, 30 years, I always had a gas reduction kiln. And then um, once I got my larger studio, and I was still teaching at uh, colleges, I found that um, the mixtures of glazes I could um, put together would get my um, would get a reduction feel to it, so I didn't need. So once I moved to a larger workshop, I didn't put up a a reduction kiln. I um, went all electric, which is great because you don't have to get up at six o'clock in the morning, turn it on, and sit there all day and put it in reduction and then um, stay there till ten o'clock at night. That's if it doesn't stall, because um, gas kilns can stall sometimes, depending how you um, how you pack them.
Do you throw that stick at the bottom on purpose for the height? Um, you take up quite a bit of material. Yeah, I did it in a hurry for you, you see. <laughs> 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 it, was, it was just, you know, last night, you know, just, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, I, I, I don't really mind if um, things are thick or thin. You just sit there an extra minute, two minutes to do it, yeah. you know. I get, I get upset when people come round to your house and they lift it up and they go, oh. And you go, yeah. <laughs> yeah. How much is it supposed to weigh then? You know? And they go, yeah, but this is... You go, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, I find that the, at the end of the day, it's, um, it's uh, what the object looks like. You know, what, you know, and uh, what you imbue into the, into the piece and what um, people get off it. Um, Clay's been our friend ever since time, you know, that's how we tell our history and our social activities all the way through the ages. So is that because you make mostly um, non-functional pieces? Because I'm thinking that if you make, say, a mug, you are going to be picking it up a lot. Well, that, well that's, that's slightly different, isn't it? Yes, that's what, I, that's yeah, what, I was, yeah, that's what yeah. I'm saying. So you make more sculptural pieces that do sit in a place to look at. Uh, well, some of the, sculpt the semi-sculpture I do go into the garden. Yes. So it needs to be solid enough so it lasts for frost, etc., etc. Although I use stoneware all the time. Yes. So uh, a mug, I've, I've done uh, production throwing. So... Mugs always are thin, so I don't really have to bother about that. So, um, what was your question? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I don't, I don't, I don't. If you're, if you're um, making things uh, semi-sculptural, they don't have to be lifted up every time, okay? Plus... Um, you want to give people their money's worth, you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I say here. And, uh, and um, if it, it you, know, it's, you know, quite a lot of mine are kind of quirky. Like um, you may see through there um, a pot with three women's heads and then another pot balanced on the top. You know, people come up to you and uh, they'll, they'll pick it up and it'll fall off, you know. So, so if it falls off, you don't want it to break. So you make things uh, um, use for purpose, purpose for use. Yeah. yeah. Stone carving. Yeah. You were, there. Was, was there other things that inspired you or that have, have fed into your work from your, your time in Zimbabwe? Mm. Working with artists and craftspeople there? Uh, things. Um, yeah, because when I came from. It was just after art school I went there, because I went to Glasgow. And. Um, you usually you have to have um, you know the academic way is that you you have to have um, drawings and uh, preparation and it makes things easier. So that when I was working there in the exhibition department, uh, I found that. Um, <clears throat> That, um, that the people um, that looked after the, I've got, I'm stuck, looked after the, the, um, the exhibition halls, the, the guys with the suits, what are they called? <laughs> stewards, yeah, the stewards, the stewards of the place. At the weekend, they used to, um, they used to um, 
go behind the gallery and this is this place called the BAT Workshop, British American Tobacco, which was who sponsored this workshop. And it um, was first created by um, a guy called uh, McEwen, uh, who used to be the first director of uh, the National Gallery of Zimbabwe. Well, it used to be Rhodesia. And um, if anybody knows anything about um, Zimbabwe carving, um, it's very spiritual. And he tried to um, create um, a culture of, um, of um, how do I say it? It's not, it's not, it's not um, like, say, like the Inuit or, or Eskimo art. This was all created for a uh, commercial. So Zimbabwe's uh, carving, although it's really advanced, it's, um, it's uh, it created from nothing. Okay. Uh, Frank McEwen, that's his name, Frank McEwen. Okay. And... Um, what um, inspired me was that um, one day they, the guy said, oh, why don't you come and do some carving since you're an artist? And I said, all right. So I turned up on the Saturday and I went along to the workshop. And they said, a guy chucks over one of his um, hammers and he says, here, I can use one of mine. And I says, uh, where do I start? He says, well, go and bring the head out. There's a load of red stone and some soapstone over there. Uh, bring it over and uh, bring, there's a head there. So I went across and looked for this head for about 15 minutes and I couldn't find the head. And he says, and I came back and says, well, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't find it. What colour stone is it? He says, it doesn't matter what kind of stone it is. He says, you've got to actually do something to bring out the head. <laughs> so I said, all right, you got me. <laughs> and uh, they said, just bring out the head that's in the stone. So I brought over a stone and I started carving the stone. And... Um, just, just went with the flow rather than be having preconceived ideas of what it is. And I do quite a lot of that with the, with, the, with the porcelain work now. And uh, there's a place in Zimbabwe called Hepworth and they have balancing stones. And it's a bit like um, just just where it's um, the sand and the rain has eroded underneath the stones. It's got balancing stones. It's under coins. It's just really high stone, just balancing. And uh, I use uh, I use it in quite a lot of my ideas. Just having pieces that move off and put on and go through and detachable rather than. rather than a piece all in one. So this is a lid I threw earlier. And this is um, a neck that I'm just making here. So when I, when, I, when I came back, I found that I used, if I was to throw something like that, that was quite normal just to put that in a show, put some nice colours on it, you know, put Tamuku on it and have something running down maybe. I found that um, I would just look at it and I think, well, that's a blank. That hasn't got anything. 
So then I started to really decorate my pots with uh, faces, trying to give it personality rather than the straight pots. So I'm going to stick a neck on top of the lid. It's like vases uh, with, with necks. I don't mind actually using two, although I can throw um, pots with necks on it. My students, I say just do it in two parts. It's what actually is at the end, not how you make it. Because most people, when, they, when they're working away at their clay work, they're in it anyway. You know, you just get, you can't kind of like, you get into a zone. Am I right? Yes. Oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> Back me up. Question. So do you always need to put a coil around between the neck and the lid? Uh, no, usually I just, it, it, um, I throw it like that, but since I threw it in a hurry, there's, um, uh, I wasn't sure of the width of the lid because the lid was upside down. So I just put a coil there and I could take it out later anyway. If it's too heavy there, I could just flip it upside down and just core it out just like I did the base of this. May I ask a question? Yeah, yeah. So you said when you went to the, in Scotland, you were drawing designs for everything before you created them. Yeah. And now you've been doing it so long, and after your Zimbabwe experience, yeah. do you need to do drawings anymore? It's just in your head, and then you can just... Um, if it's for other people, 
if it's commissions, you need to show them something. Yeah. But if it's for, if it's for me, um, these days I just kind of um, just go into the, just go into it really, because I, I teach quite a lot at the on my workshop. So I teach slab building, coil building, throwing, you know, slip casting. Um, you can, we, we do it all there. So when the idea is there, the, the final idea, if you go in that way, um, I just, as, a, as I'm going through it, I just pick the best way to actually um, execute the technique. And I just use any technique to put it together. And that's one of the things I found as well, teaching uh, for, so, for so long, because you, because if you're kind of like a normal potter, you have an idea and you kind of develop it over the years. But if, if you do a, a, a lot of teaching, like some of you, you, you you'll, you'll find that um, um, you have an idea and you have to think about how would you execute the idea or if you're going to move on what 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 you're going to if you go in for a kind of free sunday morning by yourself what you're going to do are you going to do throwing are you going to do hand building are you going to do slab building because all of them comes just as easy as anything else so you, you end up finding if you have a final idea just find the technique to get you to that and quick. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Uh, this is a mould I pressed out yesterday. So it was pressed, not so far. No. No. So the usual question, Chris, what body are you? Uh, this is VG9. Right. Does that help? <laughs> <laughs> it's from Valentine's Clay. Right. And uh, it's got it slightly, it's got 10% it's got sand, mm. so you can build without warping and uh, yeah. within reason. Yeah. 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 And, um, but most of my students um, use a thing called um, B17C, Valentine's again. Mm. They've uh, quite cornered the market, actually. Um, Is this Tracy you'll be heading then? Yep, yep. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, that's taking her off at the neck. Must be funny for her to have all these uh, likenesses cropping up. <laughs> she doesn't actually. Well, she know, yeah, she saw the first one, but she didn't know it, it ended up to be um, quite successful for me. <laughs> and, and, and the other um, people I use for models as well. How did her doll's range get on? It didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't to do with me, it was just the, mar the marketplace, yeah. you know. A uh, young black girl um, trying out to get, you know, oh, there's no black dolls. And, uh, and I said, fair enough. And I, you know, was looking for it. I, th I think it would have worked. It, it, well, it did work. Um, I think she had some small sort of um, soirees and she'd invite people and they all bought dolls and stuff like that. And then it got a bit bigger. And then um, I think it, it, was, it was marketing. I think if she was doing it now, with an event of um, Instagram, et cetera, et cetera, I think she, she would do fine. I think she would re really do fine because um, Instagram gives you an immediate worldwide market. Have you got a male equivalent of Tracy? Um, You've got a couple. Of, <laughs> you've got. You've got. A yeah, yeah. I've got. Yeah, I've got men heads. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In a similar vein. A, a similar vein? No, no. What do you mean? <laughs> similar vein. Well, you know the, your style of pottery with the heads that you do. You don't do a male version. Uh, no. Well, I have done. 
I have done, but a uh, uh, um, smaller one. Yeah. But um, you've got a lar very large Toby, the flint head. Y yeah, yeah, one. that's true. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But I like ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Just me. <laughs> I think. Uh, I know, I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. <laughs> well, does she have any uh, jewellery on her neck? Uh, um, this one? Yes. Uh, sometimes. What sort of colour? Uh, just uh, porcelain beads. Maybe African? Well, they're like um, a cowrie shells. Okay. You know the cowrie shells? Yeah. Just uh, patch her up a bit. Uh, it's funny that, um, but you, even if you talk to, um, I spoke to women artists over the years, and and um, they they like women's bodies more than men's because the the curves are a bit more subtler and there's more movement. Um, um, yeah, I'll try and get out of that one. <laughs> okay, just patching this up a bit. Yeah, we get on with, we did get on fine. <laughs> okay. Now the reason I'm doing this is because I need to, <clears throat> I need to stick my <clears throat> fingers down her throat. <laughs> Get that a bit smaller. I'll show you. Okay. So what I'm going to do is just take a brush, one of my favourite tools, down there and just inside there. And we... Sticker on there, like that. Okay, like that. Now we make some little sausages. sausages just with a toothbrush again to join stick it on a stick like that and we go down through the top here and we stick the two together so we've got so we've got um, strips going across inside for strengthener you with me yeah, yeah, yeah. good so if I put about three of those in there. I learnt that because um, I used to do quite embellish them 
with um, the hairdressers and things, and the hairdress would be too heavy, and when it comes out the kiln, it's a bit like that. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of an attitude, you know. So, so I learnt my lesson, and I developed their own little techniques for solving these problems. Well, that's the great thing about ceramics, is that, is that most of the most good ideas actually come from a glaze that's, you know, that has run a bit onto another glaze, and you go, oh, that's great, you know. That's, um, that's, that's made something else I wouldn't have thought of. These wheels are great, aren't they? These are Mervyn Fitzwilliam wheels. Does anybody know about him? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, a, he's a great guy. He was a great guy. And uh, he passed away a few years ago. And he developed these wheels in his shed in Hemel Hempstead. And uh, he used to be an aircraft pilot when he was younger. And uh, when he came out, he did a bit of pottery. He, didn't, he did a bit of pottery himself, and, um, and he decided to design these wheels. And uh, I got five of them. And um, they were voted the best in Europe a few years back. From what point of view? From what point of view are they the best? Um, They're just great to sit on and work on, <laughs> and um, nice bit of furniture, um, really good control, nice sitting position. I went to see Nick Casson when he lived in Presswood, uh -huh. not far from us, and he told me to get the Fitzwilliam wheel, that they were the Rolls Royces, and I got one in about, I think it was 1976. Uh -huh. It's still going. They're great, aren't they? Yeah. 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 Well, if Mike Casson. Yeah. yeah, yeah, well, there you go. And he was one of the best throwers. Yeah. Nicest man. Yeah. I know he lived in Preston. He did. Well, yeah, because he talked to Harrow at the, um, yeah. at the studio practice course. That's where he lived in Harrow. In. Okay. And then when he finished there, he moved to Wales. Uh huh. I only, I, only, I only meet him at. Uh, I, only, I only used to meet him at shows. I never got a chance to go to his um, yeah. workshop. Sure. Yeah. yeah. But I went to Mervyn's workshop. He was. Um, right. yeah. He was. Yeah. Yeah. Try buy one of them now, second hand. There's one on eBay for three thousand seven hundred. Oh yeah, they're they're really. Yeah, some people really appreciate them. So if you've got one out in the shed, <laughs> you'll get a... Yeah, insure it. Yeah. Right, so I'm just putting a coil around her neck just to uh, give, make it nice and solid. Now that's an amazing creation, isn't it? <laughs> what would we do without these now? They're just, you can cut them to make fits and they're they credit. Like old Sorry? They're going to be like old suits because now everybody's using their phones. I know, I know. Uh, yeah, they're just wonderful. Changed my life. Right, get that 
on there. Yes, and isn't the angle of the head a conscious decision that you made when you made the mould? She's looking up, isn't she? Uh, actually, the mould is she's looking straight, but here she's looking up. Yeah, so it's just to give her a lift. Yeah, yeah. 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 Just to, yeah, just to make her look a bit more proud, dignified, you know, dignified and all the rest of it. Just to... Sometimes I give them attitude, you know, or, <laughs> or, 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 or what, what, uh, what the piece needs. It's a slight tilt of the head. Uh, does everything you don't really need to um, <laughs> do too much with it. You can tell that somebody's being cheeky, can't you? Right. Just gonna roughen this up a bit so I can. Knife. Oh, it's knife, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, now, you can use anything for anything as long as it works. I went, um, the first. Um, Pottery, uh, um, first um, pottery wheel, small wheel that I bought. Um, this, um, this gentleman's um, mum had passed away, and um, she was in um, Hemel Hempstead. And I, um, he rang me up. He says, uh, see, "Come and look at my garage and see if you wanted any of these things." And there was a nice little Brent wheel. That, um, that I picked up from there, and a little small um, chromity kiln. Mm -hmm. And all the rest of her tools were from her kitchen. <laughs> uh, all the tools were from the kitchen. And, and, her, and her stuff was lovely. And then I realized that it's, it's not the tools you buy, expensive tools like the mud tools you buy or whatever it is. No salesmen here, are they? No. <laughs> It, it, it's, uh, it's, how, it's how it fits your hand. You know, if a, if a fish fork fits your hand and it works, and it works. I'm just going to put a, a collar on her, which um, which helps keep the neck on. Reinforces it, let's say.
So in this piece, you, you can see that it doesn't matter whether it's um, rolling out coils or using moles, throwing, or you just use the technique that um, once you have a, a grasp, a, a beginning grasp of most of the techniques, you can actually move from one to the other, which will give you a better Um, you know what I mean. <laughs> it gives you, yeah, it makes it easy for you. Yeah. yeah. Chris, would you normally do all of this on the wheel, not move to a banding wheel? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's one good thing about these wheels. You can sit there all day. Yeah. And... Um, and, and, and your feet are still on the ground. And it's not as low as the new shimpos where you're... Up under the, you know, I mean they're great for if you're in, if you've got them in your house, you can just shove them under the table or kitchen table or in the shed or whatever it is. But um, yeah, do, yeah, most most of it I would do on the wheel because I will swap because you've got a turntable there already, and then if you're so for instance I'm going to do some a line around there. In fact, I could do that now, couldn't I? Yeah. Yes, please. Um, so when you're creating um, your pieces, do you, prefer sort of, do you prefer to work in silence so you've got sort of full concentration or do you, you, know, do you like to listen to music or the radio or something or is that too distracting? I'm really bad. I, I have a video on. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, he'll actually watch the whole film. Yeah, I, I watch a movie. And probably have radio on at the yeah, same time. Yeah. Um, if there's a good story on the radio, <laughs> fair enough. Well, I like watching um, 
I'm going through, what's that one I'm going through now? That, um, um, the one, the Lord, not Lord after of the death, Rings. Life After Death. Yeah. <laughs> life <laughs> After Death. Um, yeah, Lord of the Rings, anything like that. <laughs> you know. I like a bit of sci-fi. I, I really like sci-fi. It doesn't come out in your pods. Uh, no. It well, started it's, to. Uh, it started to. It started to, definitely yeah. I do quite, used to do quite a lot of sci-fi, actually. Um, quirky things, but... Um, Sometimes, you know, to live, you have to give people what they want. Yeah. A pot. <laughs> you know. Well, you give people what they want because, you know, you need to live. And, and it is uh, pottery and people always need bowls and... Um, I mean, I like artists like um, H.R. Geiger. Anybody know H.R. Geiger? Mm -hmm. Giga, Giga, the guy who invented Alien. Yeah, and he's got books like uh, Me Mechanorma and stuff like that. And uh, f I find his, um, his uh, transformation, like you would see, say, a back of a dustbin truck or something like that. And you can turn, and, and he'll turn it into something absolutely beautiful, or something really, really weird. And um, he's the guy that invented um, the alien and the alien ships and, and stuff like that. Have you thought about returning to the sci-fi now that Instagram's a thing and you can find the white? Oh yeah, things? yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, now I've got um, um, more space and time, mm -hmm. and. Uh, my kids are growing up and taking over the workshop and uh, <laughs> it's, uh, I find, um, yeah, especially through COVID, I found that um, it, was time to, it was time to change mm -hmm. and, and, and to do more things that I, it's not that I didn't, I didn't like what I was doing before, but I was, I was just doing... Um, 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 I was just following the, not the trend, the well, things to sell. Yes. Yeah, things to sell and um, and putting my twist on it. Say there were planters, I would add things to them like trees or faces and stuff like that, and just put my twist on it. Um, but now I feel slightly different about about all of that. Well, your perspective changes all the time yeah. and it comes through in your work. And I suppose maybe what you, how you used to feel about some subjects you feel differently now and you're, you're more courageous in maybe talking about it now, mm. some of the things. Yeah, it's all, yeah, it's all, it's all changed. It's yeah. So... I mean, like through that, like through the other side. I've got, a, I've got a horse. There's a horse, a horse's head, and it, it's, and it's got a bowl on the back of it, about that size. And I, and I just thought, it works for me, <laughs> <laughs> you know. And, uh, and I, and I, and I feel quite happy about it. And, uh, and it hasn't got a horse's body or anything like that. And it's um, quite quirky, and. Um, I'm not so frightened of actually doing stuff that uh, um, people don't like. 
or not people people don't like that people that satisfies you it's yeah. work that satisfies you opposed to making it for anybody else yeah yeah Uh, in my workshop now, we've got about, um, I don't know, it's about uh, 10 people that are semi-professional. And quite a lot of them started from scratch. And it's, um, it's really good to see, um, it's really good to share my skills and, and see people doing well with it. You know, they're all part of the Flow Gallery or the Marsdens or whatever it is. They're all doing really well. television apart from the the screensaver one <laughs> sorry whoever thought pottery would be you know top watching on the television pottery photo yeah yeah um yeah yeah it's exploded in london yeah. really really exploded i would say there's about a thousand people that are practicing ceramics in london now and before there was you know 100, 150. Mm. I wouldn't say 1,000, I would say more than that. I would yeah. say, yeah. I would say we're near 2,000. There's so many studios yeah. popping up. At there's the, um, yeah. the kiln rooms and there's uh, the turn yeah. turntables, is it called? Earth. Turning Earth. There's myself, uh, there's Cosmin, yeah. there's, um, loads. Oh, there's loads. Um, loads. Loads. It's pure renaissance though, because it's kind of fallen out of fashion a bit. and. Yeah, it wasn't. It, it was. It, it, I feel like this has been a long time coming. Yeah, it is. Like yeah, you know yeah. I mean? because it's uh, such a tactile medium. I've yeah. always loved clay since I was little, but it just. I'd always be doing yeah. stuff. And I'd just be realizing people are doing it were older and older, and there mm. weren't that many younger people coming in because it just wasn't taught in schools anymore. That's right. Except for some but they just throw brand new kilns out and. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Half yeah. Half the equipment. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, it's it's amazing how it's how it's all yeah. it's yeah, all it's all changed. <laughs> my kiln is from City Lit, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. It's second yeah. hand. All of our stuff seems to be second hand. Yeah. But it works fine. It's great. So is social media the thing that is also driving uh, driving it as something that is um makes it more accessible. Can, yeah, so you can get to, to people, you can get to a market more easily. Mm. The mainstream platform, it's, it's, it opens it out and lightens it up, you know, makes it easier. Yeah, like Freya, she was in Pottery Throwdown, the second series, was it? Yeah. Yeah, and it done her wonders. Apparently, with yeah. my toilet. Did anyone <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Well, that's all right. I can't believe it. It was amazing. <laughs> But, but um, as you were saying, it's got its renaissance, mm. but socially things had changed yeah. as well. It's like, um, I was speaking to somebody the other day, and um, we were talking about how, how um, when, when, you, when you used to get married, so, well, people don't get, not as many people get married these days, but when you got married, um, they used to, um, you know, you'd, you'd end up with one or two um, Dinner sets, and the dinner sets was 130 pieces, you know, and, e and everybody got one of those, you know. The Americans used to come over and they used to buy all of the Worcesters and the Spodes and, and collect it. They stopped doing it because their ceramics went up and, and they, they followed their own. Um, 
yeah, quite a lot of the th uh, things had changed. recently your hands have gone off the front of this building. It was on a banner. Oh, were they? You came the first time. Okay. Is that what I was doing, making hands? No, you were, you were throwing pops then. Oh, okay. You big pop. And there was, a, there was a picture of your hands and you, I don't, I don't know, whether, I can't remember whether you've got your head in the left view, but I yeah. recognise you. <laughs> <laughs> right oh, you reckon with a hat, usually a hat. Yeah, we've got the real thing now, but yeah, yeah that's, that's been out there for a long while. <laughs> How are we doing for time? We're in absolutely fine, you've got loads of time. And another thing that changed my view of uh, techniques was uh, mould making. When I had a, a studio up uh, in uh, Glasgow, I used to make stuff, and you'd have you know you'd have all the time in the world. And each face or each kind of figure, I'd model separately to the occasion, whether it was a commission or it was just something I was doing myself. And then when I came down to London, you used to make things, and if something went wrong, you just didn't have time to remake it. So using moulds and, using, and, and putting out different versions of different things within moulds helped me an awful lot to actually um, continue my practice. Because I always thought that moulds was, I thought it was cheating.
weekend throwing courses in London? Freya does. I'm doing them Saturday now. Is it beginners or throwing larger? Um, or? <coughs> well, we take on a couple of beginners in every month or so. <coughs> That's just so that we can actually give them the quality. So, oh, so it's an ongoing week by week course? Yeah. Not yeah. Not like a one day. <laughs> I don't, I don't work at weekends anymore because Freya takes over my studio at weekends and evenings. So I do, no, I do 10 till 5 okay. every day, uh, except for Fridays, where Fridays I can get to do my own work, and, um, which is good. It gives me a, a break because you know when you're running your own business, you're in there every day, all day. And... Um, Especially when you've got so many sh well, left college, you know, if you're in college, you can play with the equipment. You know, when it's yours, the buck ends with you. And um, I was lucky to get such a good um, education in Glasgow that um, I've been able to, you know, put my own elements in my own kilns, make the glazes and do all, and do practically everything. Can I ask what you do um, in your downtime to relax when you're not doing pottery? <laughs> <laughs> what's that? What's, what's downtime? <laughs> you said that you don't work at weekends, so what would you do to relax and unwind and... Oh, I just take a long walk, have something to eat, uh, a beer, and and uh, watch a movie. Um, yeah, no more than that, really. What no. kind of food? Chris? What kind of food? <laughs> what kind of food? Um, Are you offering me? Yeah, right, right across, right across. I have no um, any food that's cooked well. It can be no matter whether it's Turkish, Chinese, English. You know, well, English now, your English favourite meal is um, curry, what's it called? Um, <coughs> chicken, chicken, oh, so chicken, so is uh, the British national dish, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's not um, roast beef and two veg. Anyway, anyway, in Indian um, curry is an Indian is an English thing. Anyway, it was invented in um, Birmingham. I was going to ask you, know, you sort of said your your training sort of you know, set you up for a, a career mm. as a ceramicist. I was just asking uh, Freya, have, uh, did you have you gone to an art college or? Because I think a lot of the courses are yeah. Closed. Um, yeah, yeah, and a lot of them have opened. There's a lot of new places. But I did do a fine art uh, degree at Chelsea, so I've done all art all the way through my education. Yeah. I kind of, yeah, I did, yeah, from art GCSE, I then went to the Brit School and did a visual art and design course, and that was a BTEC. So all of my A levels were in art, mm -hmm. so I was practicing it left, right, and center, just going through a rainbow of techniques yeah. and trying everything out, and then I went. And, and went to university. And I suppose at university, I found that I connected with clay um, really quite naturally. Mm -hmm. But it, it was somewhat to my surprise because I had never, I didn't, I didn't have it in my mind that that was something that I wanted to do. Especially when your parents do something. I mean, we all want, you know, you when your parents do something, you just, you don't want to do it because you perhaps you see the stress you feed off. You know, you see the other side of it. But it's not like that now at all. But um, I was in, at that age. I was probably um, in university. I was inspired to learn all the techniques, mm. and I was lucky enough to be able to spend time um, observing my dad in the studio. Yeah. So it's it's not so much that he would you know give me a, a lesson every day like, as he would to a student. It's just that I could I could learn through watching as yeah. as you are yeah. and when I got 
things wrong, I would really know about it. <laughs> you know? So, um, mm. yeah, uh, so I learnt gradually, and then I, um, after university, I, I was just working in a bar, and I thought, you know what, I just, I was kind of put off the art world, because I, I kind of fell out of love. In, in fact, university, gave, the best thing that it, it kind of taught me, I understood the art industry, and, um, and it seemed, in my, at my perception at, at, in my early 20s, it seemed to be all about money, so it kind of put me off, and I was a bit disheartened, and so I found my way back through being creative again with Ken, and um, there wasn't anything better for me, and um, I just followed what I really enjoyed, and I said, Dad, can I, can I help you out for a bit? Um, that a bit, <laughs> a bit, a bit, a bit turned. <laughs> She's it. still here. I know. I know. I'm so <laughs> um, and I start. I start he, he said, "Well, if you want to do it properly, you better learn how to throw because it wasn't something that I was. I mean, throwing was fine, but I wasn't like drawn to it like a lot of people are. I found it a little bit boring actually. Mm. Just looking at it. But um, once you get into throwing, you, you, it's the opposite. It's mm -hmm. It's amazing. It's meditative. It's giving you a lot, a lot of quality. So I, I learned a whole syllabus of throwing, um, everything, and then I could teach it. And I started to teach kids. And, and you know, when you, when you're with kids, you kind of learn inside out, upside down, because they give you all the mistakes. So and then I just everything just snowballed. And I started teaching. And do you enjoy the teaching side as much as you do the? Very the much so. Side very side much so. Side. They're two of the same. Two of the same, it's like in and out, up and down. So you don't want to just completely be, I would just be in my studio on my own, all like quite solitary, which I do need, but I also need the opposite. Every, I suppose every character has. And children often want to do such mad things. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they, they bring way. so much. Um, they just say, I want to build a ship. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, all right, that's the well, let's do it on the, you know. You know, you can be really creative, even if we don't fire everything. It's just the fun, and it, it just keeps you on your toes as, a, as an artist as well. Yeah. Do you ever use edge like play with them then? You don't fire. Um, I do. I, I mean, I do um, if I'm out of the studio. But if I'm in my studio, I just use the, the clay that I, I have. But I yes, the other night on Thursday night, I used an air dry clay called Sculpt. Yes. That's a fairly new one that's come out over lockdown and it's actually it's really good can you fire it really good and you can fire it to stoneware it's the, i think it's the best air dry clay yeah. okay. the best the best learning you can do is teaching because because you because you spend <coughs> all the time correcting everybody's work because you're just correcting 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 yeah. so when you come down to your own work you're you're I'm not doing it like that. <laughs> uh, and, 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 you know, even if you're teaching this coil building or this bit of slab building, you learn so much by other people's mistakes because you, you've got to get it right. Yeah. And, and um, it, it, it really lifts your um, skill level. Yeah. Right. Sorry, Freya. Go ahead, carry on. Yeah, no, it's fine. Mm. Sorry, Freya. Can I ask you a question? Mm. Have you had any kids come through your hands, as it were, who are really gifted and you see that raw yeah. talent? Yeah, hundred percent, all the time. Wow. Yeah, it's like I barely have to say anything to them. It's silence. I oh. just I sit there and just in the zone with them and just guide them to their sort of they just blossom. It's really beautiful to see. Yeah, I've got a couple. I've got this young girl called Ellie at the moment, and um, I remember when I first met her. She said she's quite cheeky. She said. I had a really busy kids' class on the weekend, and um, she said to the kid next to her, does the teacher ever help you? And I was like, I was like oh my God, this kid needs to... I was like, no, I, you know, I will come round to you in a minute. But she does, she, for, uh, every, every day she's in my session, I was like, Ellie, would you like some help? No, I'm fine, thank you. She doesn't need any help, but she's, I mean, she's very aware. You, yeah, you have some kids that just learn very differently. And I, you know, I, I don't even know how to teach them, but you just, you and the student learn together how to build the best out of yes. what you've got. It's, um, yeah, and, and, and yeah, she doesn't need any help. She just does it naturally. Kids, I suppose, do pick up 
Well, no, I wouldn't say that generally. Some kids find it very, very difficult, as mm. with adults, but and then you have some kids that will just soak it up like a sponge. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I wonder whether, is there any sort of formal training for youngsters who show promise and then maybe they get, they get it spoiled by that you know, idea of this is how, well, that's what you have been doing, this is how you ought to do it. You know, have you ever seen anyone sort of yeah. spoiled through that routine? Oh, through sort of through rigidity, well. mm-hmm. through through structure and discipline. Yeah. Um, no, because I, I do the op- I'm probably very the opposite. Yeah. So for some parents that want their kids to have structure and stuff, I, in the part I probably started off a bit more like that, kind of quite tough on myself as a teacher mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. Their teachers, like, but um, I don't do it like that. I'm like it's not school. No. no I'm no. here to enable. to to enable exactly yeah. and. You know, I, re- I really cater to a full spectrum of learning, you know, because I, I, I'm not typically an atypical learner as well. You know, I'm very dys- dyslexic and stuff. So I, I I think, yes, I'm very open to different learning styles. And, you know, yeah. So I'm just. I finished it. Sorry, Dad. I it's know. fine. It's all good. <laughs> Shot to the next. No. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we were talking about taking photos the other day, and um, and we was and uh, people were saying, "Oh, that's such a beautiful pot," and you know, it must be really difficult for them, for the person in the book, to get it like that. I says, but. You don't know how many pots that they've done just to get that one picture in the magazine. Yeah. And you don't know what the other side of the pot looks like. <laughs> <laughs> because I've, you know, I've, you know, I've had some stuck to the shelf and, you know, <laughs> but the other side looks really lovely, you know, that goes straight into the magazine. Yeah. So, so that comes down to what I'm doing here is that You've got the, you've got the, the frontal look of the of the piece, but it's always nice if you if you're doing something which is um, like drawing. Like it's good it's good to have lines. This I know this is really basic, but just lines that take your eye all around to the back of the pot, because uh-huh. because you know pots are round, and um, it should be it, it, sh- yeah, it should be taken all the way around whatever you're, you're doing, whatever the shape is, sort of. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll just finish off there. But I would like to add, I think learning ceramics, you do, it's a balance of discipline and creativity, uh-huh. you know, if, if you do, if you want to learn something, get to an end, if you want to learn how to throw a moon jar, for example, you've got to practice and go through the basic steps. Yeah, definitely. And it just, it's, it's a practice thing and lots of repetition does it, I think, if you would agree. Yeah, but yeah, it's, it's always a balance between discipline and just letting yourself go. Would you agree, Dad? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Every time. Yeah, like centering. It's like learning an instrument. It's like learning the scales. You know, you centre, make a, a cylinder, make a <coughs> cylinder, going up and down the scales. And once you've got that, you can expand on it. And it's same with music. It's like when you're throwing. I always used to, I always used to say to some of my students, like, when you're throwing and, uh, and it's not going well, just hum your favourite tune. And while you're humming, if it's your favourite tune, you should, it should actually go into the pot. And I see your fingers is like a, a, a record needle and it just puts the vibe into, into the... <laughs> but I, but I do, I, it works for me. I just kind of hum what I like and, and uh, then it will come out. Right, I need to do one more. Is there it such a ca- thing as copyright in pots? 
because I know I own a picture and I haven't got the copyright of it. Of what? My picture. I don't own the copyright for my picture. There is copyright on pots, though. There yeah, is. No, I was just saying, is there copyright on pots? Yes. Yeah. I was working for a lady called, uh, when I first came to London, called Kate Byrne. <coughs> and um, this is when um, uh, the Chelsea um, craft used to be in the Chelsea Town Hall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, we used to do, we used to make loads of money. And uh, <laughs> in those days. And um, she used to make these mugs and she used to, Giant um, pineapples, giant uh, star fruit, really brightly coloured stuff. And, um, and then one day one of her friends came up to her and said, uh, I saw your stuff in, um, not Woolworths, win uh, Winter, um, not Woolworths, no, the one, win um, Winter Skills, I think it's American. Uh, not Walmart. It's, an, it's, an, uh, it's another. Oh, I can't remember what it was. But anyway, anyway, um, we went to the shop and uh, we had a look, and they were the same. And got a solicitor, took them to court. She got five thousand pounds out of it, and they had to take them off the shelves. Yeah. So you can get. Um, um, yeah, you can get your trademark. Not just your trademark, but your your style. Uh, patent and but well, you don't have to patent. You just need to prove that somebody copied you. Yeah. 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 And there's a lot of that. And the, 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 and that's another thing about um, about Instagram. Although it's done very well for Freya and other folk, and uh, they use it in the right way. There's the the, the thing that that bugs me about it is that. What, each person, when they go to their college or they go to their school, or you have your library, don't you? And you research your library, and you've only got a limited amount of books that the teacher has put in there. And, and each place has got their library, and they've got, you know, they've got their five glazes, and they've got their etc. But uh, I'm, I'm a bit worried about this kind of pluralism that, that's actually um, gone into the Instagram or, and the Etsy. Um, era that uh, everybody's got the same library, do you know? And and now you're finding everybody's, the, you know, you go to a show and you go, oh, that was the, on that, and that was on, on that, and and you're finding that all the ideas are uh, becoming homogenised, and I think that's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a danger. So. Um, so when I speak to my students, uh, w when we talk about stuff and stuff, I says, if you're going to put something on your pot, put something out of your own past. Find something from your own past that is unique to yourself. Do you date your pots, Chris? Date them. Do you date them? Yeah. Uh, uh, um, sometimes. Okay. Sometimes. Well, another way to prove, as you said, you can only prove that someone's copied you if you've got a starting point. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't really care about that, really. Okay. For myself, yeah. I don't care because I, I, got, I keep on changing my ideas. And yeah. um, like I was saying earlier on, I don't really... I do, I, I do sign them, I do stamp them, but the, the date I don't always remember to do. Ah. Yeah, because uh, I used to get in trouble for, for not signing them. You know, people say, but it's not signed. You know, that's half the price. And I'm going, oh, yeah, I'm going... <laughs> Fair enough. I, I understand. If you're going to spend that money on it, you should sign. Right, so there she is. Right, the fisher woman. She's got a little fish on the back there coming down. And I think I'll put a little, another little fish on there. And um, it's a nice thing to use to store your cotton buds or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah okay. Good. Outside. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to answer for that. <laughs> Just a little fish on there. Mm -hmm. 
Do you think the homogenisation of ideas is partly because more people are doing it? When there are less people doing it, there are less... I don't know, I just... Uh, and also, when people are learning, they copy. If there's, is there, if there's only a few books, yeah. like the internet is... is, is uh, I mean, the... Let's go back to just, just Instagram is a book, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, and um, people are... I mean, my students come in and they go, I saw this and how do I get that colour? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, is this in reduction or is this such and such? You know, um, um, this pot has got, th it's got three legs like you. You know what I mean? And um, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's, so it's all, it's, um, it kind of just worries me, you know what I mean? Mm. The, the ceramics have been doing so well in the last few years. Mm. Yeah, I'd hate for it all to kind of gel and, Everybody doing the same thing. But then it just means if someone does something different, they'll stand out and then they'll get the. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It yeah. I, t I tell you, I tell you, I tell you what. When I first got to London, right, I was always still doing quirky things, right? But um, uh, there used to be lots of, um, like with Cape Byrne and uh, say like the Camden pottery, right? Mm. They used to have lots of bright colours, lots of earthenware, and such and such and such, right? Mm. A couple of years later, right, Edmund Deval came along. Yeah. I like him as a person, never read his books, but he was, uh, he was uh, a bit of a pioneer, mm. right? So he made these tall, solid, do you know his work? Yeah, yeah tall, some of them sometimes really quite beautiful porcelain um, vases or objects, mm. okay? And then, uh, then he would make a um, hundred of them and he put them in a box, sell them for 20 grand, 50 grand, as he does, right? And because, and, because of, and because of him, there was a whole era of uh, students that wouldn't touch colour. Yeah. You, you see what I'm saying, how, how it changed? And I found that it put ceramics back mm. a bit. Yeah. Um, and, it, uh, and I'm not saying it's, it was his fault, because I'm proud of what he's done. Mm. And, and um, I take my hat off to him, but um, because um, he was uh, doing so well and he's got so many copiers, it kind of took a, it took the guts out of ceramics for a while. Yeah, yeah. yeah for about five, eight years or something yeah. like that. <clears throat> and that's what I equate that would that as happening yeah. to Instagram. Yeah, 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 All right. yeah, yeah. 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 Rather than you know for people to find something different, they would actually go to South America yeah. and see the Hopi Indians or go to China and, 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 and visit the things and stuff like that. But now it's all there. Yeah. And then when the, the money makers are rising to the top, all of theirs get um, copied yeah. and then um, it, it waters down um, people's... You get what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I, th I think it's a good thing that ceramics is, you know, mm. more power to my pocket. But um, yeah, it, there is a there is a danger. Yeah, I yeah. find that um, the the new technical age is kind of mm. bringing on us. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's very challenging. Yeah, mm. because yeah. things are coming from a computer rather than people's soul. Mm. Yeah. Well, computers yeah. are going to have souls yeah. probably one day. It's <laughs> <laughs> true yeah. in the future. Yeah. Like we well, then you've got things like music, like techno, which is kind of machine soul, you know. So it's. Yeah. I think computers, I'm a computer programmer, so I, mm. I, have more to, I have more to say about that when we have time. Mm. <laughs> yeah, but, but then again, you're here because of ceramics, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's yeah. Like, like half the people that took time off in the COVID times, they're, they're going to ceramics because it's the other end of them. Mm. Yeah. I've been yeah. since I was tiny. So oh, okay. Oh, yeah. So yeah. Come, but yeah. Go, yeah. Here and there, yeah. you know, come yeah. and go. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Yeah. I think, I don't know, cause, because computers are made by human beings, they have the stamp of a human being on them. That's all. Anyway, it's not mm. now. Yeah. So all right, we can talk about this later. I like sci fi. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm a bit sci fi here. Yeah. Okay, so we have a break or are we all right?
right. Yeah. What, what time break. is it? Yep, everyone have a break. <laughs> <laughs> and then Frey will do uh, a small demonstration afterwards. Are you ready for me? Yes. yes. I thought I would do some throwing, seeing as he's done all the carving and assembling. Is that cool? Yes. I can throw anything in particular. Do you want to have a pick or should I pick? Anything in particular you want to see? Moonja. You just want to see a moonja? Yeah. Fine. Yeah, this? Okay. I'll, I'll do a little one. I've just got a little bit of clay. If you're doing something like a moon dry, it's always good to knead the clay quite well and use hard clay. Well, not, not hard. Do as, you've got to feel the texture of the clay suited to you, how strong your hands and stuff are. But um, if it's too soft, it will, it will collapse on you a lot easier. So, actually with the moon dry, because you're going out and in, you do need the strength in the clay. So you throw it in one rather than two parts? Yeah, I throw it in one. Well, it depends how big you're doing. So with this amount of clay, this is what well, that's about four or five pounds, maybe that here. But the clay I bought is really soft because I was going to do some things. But um, we'll, we'll see how we get on. So, and please do just shout out any questions. I'll just talk my way through it. Okay. So, on we go. This is actually from my studio, so I've got, I've got a studio just below him and um, that I was given maybe like four years ago. Um, and I ended, I ended up using kind of sort of like the scraps of all the students, to be honest. <laughs> so it's, it's all stoneware clay, but I, I've got, and it is mostly from Valentine's, but I just mix some of the dark and the light together. But it is, essentially, it's very similar to what he's used. This is just a slightly darker body. So does it have any um, gritting in as well? Yeah, it has, it's, it's, got, it's got really fine, it's got like bentonite in it and grog. So I've, I've mixed some really fine white stone words as um, well as grog? crank. Um, really it's, ra it's random. <laughs> <laughs> At the moment, it's random. Sometimes I'll order in special clays, depending on the project, but um, most of the time I'm just, I'm using some sort of stoneware. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, the big, if it's any bigger than this, I'll spend a couple of minutes just pushing it in the middle, just tap centering it round like that, just really slowly. So you can actually centre the whole thing, just just by pushing it and tapping it, to be honest, it takes a bit longer, but you, you want to set yourself up for, for centering. So making the, making the lump of clay a ball shape or a cone shape is going to help you. And putting it in the middle of the wheel as well is always going to help you. <laughs> <laughs> Does it, doesn't it? Otherwise you just fight it for the next 10 minutes. So I'm going to cone up a little bit. Um, it's a bit like combing the knots out of your hair. That's how I explain it. Because in the same way you knead and you get the rhythm, all the folds of the clay in the same direction. Yeah. So when you're coning it, it's, it's like kneading but on the wheel. But, so the twist is up, maybe. And then at, when you push that cone down, it's easier to guide into the middle. Do you find? Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah. 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 I just understand my words. You understand my words? <laughs> <laughs> Are you a teacher? Do you do, do, you do pottery? <laughs> yeah, students will do that to you, I can see. Um, okay. There are lots of ways to send. A lot. There's so many techniques of doing this. Um, I'm left-handed, but I think I, I ignored that for a really long time. I was just doing it. We're just learning it right-handed, mostly because of 
most of these wheels spin this way, the ones that we use, and most of the people that we, I come into contact with are right-handed, so I just learnt right-handed and then I can teach it both ways, if need be. So... Which way do you prefer to try and get a shot? Right-handed. My understanding is it's not so much the handedness, it's more the hemisphere you come from. Mm. So east, east pro clockwise, west pro anti-clockwise. It's my understanding. So Japan and China. Yeah, 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 I get you. Yeah, absolutely. It's what you're used to. I mean, like all the door, your everything's kind of yeah. suited to right hand. It's what I'm used to more so. Right, let me just get on with it. Make a hole. Go all the way to the bottom, maybe I leave about a centimetre of clay or so, a centimetre and a half. Depends how depends how thick your foot wants to be. You can plan ahead. I always think, like, well, how is this going to be? Is it going to have a deep foot? Or um, is it going to be a wide bottom or a very narrow one? Because you need to know that for when you're opening it up at this stage. So you look at the inside and I'm just checking it's nice and flat on the inside and I've left it quite narrow so the opening there means it will be a little bit thick now at the base as I'm throwing but I can carve away just as my dad did earlier he carved away a lot of the bottom and it just elevates that curve shape but also as as I'm going to throw a cylinder to start with and then I'm going to collar the top in and, and that just kind of holds holds the whole form in and I'll stretch out the belly afterwards. Here. So here's my first lift. I'll squeeze the wall and get a couple of lifts that way. You see I get the the wall tapered all the way in right from the get-go and just keep the the entrance of the pot leaning in. So like it's a a volcano shape and I'll as you're getting the height I tend to collar it in a lot because the moment as we know as the moment clay stretches out it's very hard to compress it back in, in the same way skin when it's overstretched it's done you, so I mean as you get more efficient at throwing you, you the aim is to take the clay to the final destination in the most efficient ways because the more you stretch the clay about getting it to do acrobatics and stuff it just loses its strength and it collapses on you. So I'm going to use the knuckle pull here. Just collar it in after every pull. I'll get pull it in from the base as well. Just slow down. The longer the stretch, the more clay you pull up in one go, I find. and hold the, the clay at the bottom. You see that indent there? You just hold the knuckle in at the base for a little bit until I get this indent and that helps me to know how much clay I'm lifting up. You don't want to do too much in one go, bit by bit is good. Are you using a sponge start to give you moisture? Yeah, sometimes I just hook the sponge around my knuckle. Mm. Especially when I'm doing plates and stuff, I just have a big sponge under my fist and Pulling it out like that saves you letting go ten times a minute, you know, to wet it to keep the pot lubricated. I'm 
going to straighten it up a little bit and start the shaping. Nice little rib from Mud Tools, have you know? Yes. Which I always get the Mud Tools ones. It's quite it's nice. It's nice having nice tools still. We we make about we, we make like half of our tools and then we buy the other half. But it, it is nice to have nice tools. Okay, so I'm going in on the neck here collaring in the neck. So even if I have to stretch out that later on, I'm going to keep it, keep returning to the entrance of the pot. I'll use a kidney in my other hand. Sometimes I'll stretch it out with a, a kidney on the inside as well. So I'll show you what that looks like. He's bought the whole kitchen sink. <laughs> I really like these small kidneys, so they've got a really nice little curve on them. So I'll use that inside. You start a little bit way up? Yeah, I'm just going to do it gradually. You get rid of the, the slip on the surface and that strengthens up the wall as you go, especially if it's very soft like this. Sometimes when you're stretching out, it goes wobbly really quickly, but I find that's because you just need to hold your position for a bit longer. Sometimes I'll just push and hold, move up a little bit, push and hold and then move up a little bit. And I look at it and think, well, where's, the, where's the, the widest point of the pot? You know, there's many different types of moon joints, some with a higher shoulder. Like the one upside down actually has quite a high shoulder. The widest part of the pot is higher up. And then sometimes you get the really round ones that are like football. Okay, so think about, Think about the curve and how, how you're going to refine it. I find that if you just collar in the top, it does quite a lot of the work for you and you can see how much more you need to push out. So with moon jars, some people belly out a little bit too much and it just keeps collapsing. It tends to fall at two points on the shoulder here and below the curve. So the clay is usually either too thin or it can't support the shape that you're stretching the clay to. But you've got to remember that when you're turning the pot by removing the base, that will do 40% of the shaping and the same as when you're collaring the neck in. That's why if you collar it in from early on, it makes it a lot easier to do it later. So we've got to remember, clay's got memory and it does kind of remember where you put it. If you keep it in good condition, keep teeing off the rim like that, keep it nice and thick and healthy, then the clay stays elastic and it stretches. I think that's it. I'll just refine the curve here a little bit maybe. I'm just going to use a rubber kidney on the inside. Maybe I'll see how far I can stretch this. <laughs> One of two things will happen. It'll probably collapse. Looks like it'll probably fall from the top, actually, if I keep stretching this one. If it falls from the top, you've got to hoist it up, hoist the shoulder up like that, and strengthen it up with a, with a kidney. And it will hold at a position. If, the, if it's slightly more like that, it will hold rather... You know, as soon as it goes vertical, even if you're doing like the rim to a plate, if you're pulling it out vertical, all you need to do is 
lift the pot off and put it on the table and it will just collapse. Has anyone found that? Yeah, so it's always good to hold it at slightly, its strongest position slightly at a diagonal like that. <coughs> A lot of my vases, if they're, especially if they're bigger than this, I've been making them in, in parts, similar to how my dad has made them in parts. So I've got a couple of pieces that I did earlier, and you can see how that, for example, would sit on that. Okay. You just need to make sure that the receiving end of the pot is, is thick enough and let it dry out leather hard so it doesn't sink. Don't turn it too thin here because it needs to support, when you put the weight on it, it needs to support quite a lot. Sometimes I find, you know, I've done it before, I've turned it a bit too thin and it, it looks fine when it goes through the bisque firing and then when everything, it, so when it's got the glaze on, that's when all the mistakes show because glaze melts and the weight of the glaze just makes the pot sink. So if you've got any thin patches, that's when it all kind of comes through. Um, I'm going to trim this one off and I think it's finished. Should I make it into something else? <laughs> and then that will be me done. Right, first thing I could do, cool that out a little bit. Right, can I colour it in this question? It needs to be a little bit more... The sound effects. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Squashed look. <laughs> the best. So my clay, because I've stretched out quite far here, so it's struggling to sort of keep itself together as we can see. But I'm going to take off all the all the soft stuff at the top. Like that. And what I've got at the bottom is probably strong enough to make it into a bowl or something. You've got to remember, I always have to remind students, you know, this is just mud, to be honest. And, you know, as you're sitting here adding water to it, you're really softening it down. And after 10 minutes of water and manipulation, it's done. up and out, so I'm just stretching it with my knuckle, gradually stretching it up and out with my knuckle, up and out, up and out, and the speed helps to sort of stretch it out a little bit. Inside hand below your outside, Inside hand, um, well they're both, yeah, I'm going to the base on the inside, 
So the inside hand is slightly above the outside one. Because I've got a narrow base here, I can't really pull it out that far as a bowl. As a bowl, you, the wider the base, the wider you can pull out the, the walls. So there's loads of ways to stretch that about. You can choose your, you can use your whole hand and just clasp it. You use your whole hand to stretch out the wall. You can also use a kidney to help you stretch out the wall, just stretch your fingertips out and support the wall like that. Sometimes I start at the bottom and stretch it out gradually. So I'm starting at the top and going down and out. Then you can go from the bottom to the top. I suppose with a bowl, the beauty of a bowl is an unbroken curve from rim across to the other rim. I mean, there's different, many different styles of bowls, but I always look at the inside shape knowing that I'm going to carve the outside to match it. You can also just use a sponge. I might just belly it out a little bit. It's not coping. I stretch it out a little bit more at the bottom, hopefully it will support itself. Oh, it's gonna go. There you go. What do people enjoy making most on the wheel then? Is it moon drug? Is it bowls? Yeah, I find people. Mm, I suppose so. I'm enjoying yeah. bottles. Are you? Okay. Because there's the colouring in and making sure it's not like off at an angle at the top. Yeah. Get my head that, yeah, yeah colouring in it's yeah, it's colouring really it satisfying if you can really get it in. Well. Yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah, I enjoy colouring in too. Actually, yes. Do you make many bottle forms? Um, not really. No. No, I don't. The form itself doesn't excite me, so I don't really make bottle forms, but I make loads of them just teaching people how to do it. So there's a, there's a bowl. The, the top here is getting a bit flappy. I don't have any leather to strengthen the rim up, but I'm using the flap of my skin just to... Um, do you know what the chamois leather does on the rim? Yeah, I can sort of... I use the flap of my skin just... Like just exactly. <laughs> I'm going to push this out and just let it collapse. Can I do that? Just for fun. Yeah. <laughs> 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 huh? Well, I remember when we had to make the teapots, that was probably the funnest thing. What's his name? That that comedy, that comedy guy, that comedy. Oh, he's so funny. The big guy, yeah. One minute teapot. Yeah, oh, that was. To be honest, on yeah, on the whole, whole experience, it is a really stressful experience. And um, the time constraints, oh, God, yeah, they're real as well. So, in the, you know, the first. The first challenge we had to make was a, a dinner set, 14 piece dinner set in four hours. And mind you, I never even sit down at a wheel for more than like an hour or two because it just gets uncomfortable physically. So you have to sit, it, it's incredibly stressful, but I would say, I don't think I've ever learned or pushed myself as far. Um, so yeah, it's a bit like doing another degree course really, but a ceramics degree course I found, because I just learned so much and um, I met some amazing characters like Keith and Kate and all the other guys on the show were all good friends, which is really nice. You know what? I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but I am. I made him cry on the first day twice. Well, they didn't show it on TV. I was the first person. Yeah, it was really weird. They had a funny... I think they didn't want me to do well because of, cause, cause of my dad's a potter. 
But it's, you know, no, I shouldn't say that. And I don't, I don't mean that. But, you know, it's a story. It's, a, it's an entertainment program. It's an entertainment program. So I, I appreciate it for what it is. And it was, just, it was a fantastic experience. It could be a emotional Have, guy. Sorry? It could be an Oh yeah, being emotional, nothing wrong with that. No, no, man. nothing no. wrong with that at all. Do you remember what you did that made you cry twice? <laughs> um <laughs> I'm just saying, keep doing the shit. Yeah. <clears throat> I am winning this one. <laughs> um no, he, he, he said, uh, he was, it was tenacity, he said, oh, you're very t tenacious, he said. I think it was when I was doing my jug, I think I won the first, the jug prize, when we were decorating these jugs from, um, what's that lady called, Emma Bridge, Bridgewater. And so I won the jug and he just, was, he, he felt passionate about my jug. <laughs> Yeah, so Rosa and Ronaldo and Florence, they were on the same one. You watched that, yeah. So Florence, she's my friend. I'll be going to see her soon. We're making it, we're doing a pottery collection, which is really nice. Florence was on episode three. Yeah. Um, but you can't see series one and two. I know. Because they're not on Netflix. Yeah. I know. I know. <laughs> is it, an, well, I suppose there's just so many new ones coming. All right, that's me done for today, I think. And another one for the bin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you, when you're throwing, you have to stop when you like the look of it. That's what I always have to tell people, because, yeah. There's a point where it just has a final stretch and it just holds and looks really good. And that's when, that's when it's best to stop and wire it off and take off. Do you want me to show you any more, or is that enough? Because I feel like we don't want to run out over time. Mm -hmm. Well, have, have you ever made hand clay instead of out, out the way? Um, Scott, yeah, I started off sculpting, to be honest. So when I was a kid, I used to spend a lot of time mm -hmm. just making little faces and little figures. And I've still got some of them. But now I throw and combine the techniques together. Okay. But, I mean, most of my recent work has, has been thrown. But I also use sculpture as well. Um, yeah, I don't think I've got enough time to assemble all the bits that I, I brought, but um, really good, thank you. Yeah. is that okay? Yeah.